today's video, we're going to talk about cart abandonment ads as it is advertising to people who get to your shopping cart and do not purchase. Advertising to them again in order to get them to come back and purchase and see you actually recoup the full amount of money it costs to get you get that person interested in that product in the first place so that you can get that sale from that particular consumer. What we're going to talk about is a way to dynamically create an ad for somebody who got to the shopping cart and did not buy for whatever reason. They're checking around. They didn't like the shipping cost, whatever it is. And put the product that they were looking at in the ad along with some other stuff that works extremely well to the point where you can get a 5 to 10x ROI on the ad campaign itself that does this and of course just makes any of your other advertising as I was just uh, alluding to a, a second ago that you the, all the money that you have to spend to get people to your site to make that tighten that up so that you aren't losing people at the bottom of your sales funnel right before they go to purchase. So I'm going to talk about how to actually execute on this, what this is in detail. And basically just if you're running an e-commerce shop, how to get more sales from the same exact traffic you have now just by adding an, a decent custom ad for somebody who gets to the cart and does not buy. So with that said, I'll get into it. I've talked about on this channel, you can search for my cart abandonment video that I made about uh, cart abandonment ads. But I've talked about cart abandonment ads before on this channel and they still actually work very well uh, to eliminate or greatly reduce the amount of cart abandonment you get, i.e. people who get to the shopping cart on your site but do not go on to buy. And of what solution I told you that I, we were typically using for basically every e-commerce shop out there because this works for everybody who's doing e-commerce. Well, sure. I'll say the exception being if you're selling something for many, many thousands of dollars, uh, might not be so hot of an idea to do this. But with that, what this actually looks like is you actually set up a remarketing audience on or through Google Analytics. You could also set it up through Google Ads. But it, as we're talking, we're going to talk about Facebook here, but I'm just for simplicity's sake, we're talking about Google at first. Through Google Analytics is in. I actually use Google Analytics to set up remarketing audiences. So with that, I'll set up a remarketing audience generally. And th when you set up a remarketing audience, Google wants you, if you're going to do it through Google Analytics or through Google Ads for that matter, uh, what's the footprint or what's you got to identify to Google of the people that come to your site, who do you want to have as, you know, how to sub-segment all the people that come to your site. You can either remarket to people who've been to your site in general or to people that reached a certain page or on your site for a certain amount of time or whatever. We want people who got to the cart and did not purchase. So what you'll generally do is say, if they got to any page with slash cart in it, they will be on this audience. And people who did not get to thank you page. So meaning they got to the cart, but they did not finish purchasing. That would be a abandoned cart user right there people who have abandoned cart with that audience that you've defined from there you make them an offer to come back and buy that they can't refuse the general idea here is if i'm going to abandon cart you can go up ahead and look at the most common reasons why people abandon cart but generally speaking the number one is they didn't like the shipping price um, which is why people give free shipping by the way it also gets a lot of attention just in general, giving free shipping out and putting that in your front end advertising to get the general public to come to want to come to your site in the first place. Uh, but also they're also, you know, cross comparing what you're selling to other solutions out there last second. Those are the two, two of the main things. So what consumers obviously know that they can do is they can procrastinate. They were going to buy, they got to the shopping cart. They were going to check how much the shipping was. And, you know, a lot of times just, just for informational purposes. And then they'll go look at other sites and see how much the product is plus shipping going to be and decide who they're going to ultimately buy from. And as they're looking around, sometimes they'll remember to come back to your site if that's you. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes people will intend to come back to your site 
but they don't come back to your site because they forget to come back to your site, they get distracted, they get a phone call, that distracts them and then they re don't remember to come back to your site to purchase something else comes up. A lot of people will intend to come back to your site with, with good intentions, but they'll forget or they'll spunk their money on something else that they were gonna use to buy your product. There are a lot of different reasons why somebody would not come back. And if you can make an offer specifically for a person in order to come back to check out, they are going to come and check out more often because they're going to be, um, specifically if you structure the offer right, less likely to procrastinate until later. So even though they have good intention to come back and buy if they don't find another company that has the same price as you, let's say if that's the reason why they left without purchasing, uh, again, they can get distracted and then not come back. And so you want to cut down in the amount of people who are intending to come back to your site at a later point in time by giving them a, a reason to buy now versus later because you're going to get a lot less people who will forget or end up spending the money on something else or whatever, all, all the reasons why they don't actually come back. And so what that, so you, you target, like I said, all the people by anybody who gets to the cart and does not buy, and then you make them an offer to come back, i.e. I'll give you X or I'll give you this if you come back and check out now. And that cuts down on the procrastination. You end up with a lot less percentage of the people who come to your site that get to your cart actually abandon it without a purchase or don't, or don't actually ever make a purchase in general. And so what that will generally be is, like what we'll do for clients typically, uh, come back uh, or click on this ad and use cart 10. We'll give you 10% off your order for, you know, actually checking out and finishing your order now. That's the general idea. It could be a percentage off, it could be a flat amount off, uh, depending on what you wanna do. Uh, some people, you guys have thin margins. If that's the case, I would give $5 off or $10 off your order by coming back and checking out now. That is an offer that generally almost, but basically, as a golden rule, always will make money in terms of the cost of running the ads to how much sales you're gonna get. Okay, but there's a way to actually take this a step further we found. We started experimenting and we found a dynamic ad that will actually work better than even that ad, which as it comes to running display advertising of some sort, that card abandonment ad is the most profitable ad that you're gonna run. Even more profitable than marketing to customers to get them to come back and buy again. The card abandonment ad has the most sought after group of people that you can target with a display ad and then, and with that, making them making the offer gets it to work, you know, well. Ma taking that offer and conjunct and uh, combining that with the uh, individual item that the person was looking at, even more so, which we'll get into next. So what we found even works even better than having a typical offer like come back and finish your uh, order that's that you have in your cart. We'll give you you know, $10 off of your order if you do it now by using XYZ code. Uh, what works better than even that is, which already works great on its own, is to have the item or items that the consumer was looking at, or which would have been in their cart by default, in the ad driven dynamically. So specifically, literally like, you know, what I'm saying here, if they were looking at a specific t-shirt, that's what was in their cart before they left the cart and did not buy. You put that cart, or sorry, you put that uh, shirt, you put it in the ad and that's done dynamically through scripting. But you don't just show them the product that they were looking at, that's lame in and of itself. And that would not even be as good as just saying, come back to your cart and check out now, we'll give you 10% off. What you do is you actually have that picture of the shirt that they were looking at and that they had in their cart when they abandoned and the offer for $10 off if you finish your checkout now to combine the two concepts into one uh, really, really good ad. As a general note, as I didn't quite mention before, with your cart abandonment offer, always what you do is, or what I do, is I'll send people directly back to the cart. Some people, we, it, uh, it, it works pretty good it's even still. I would still do it if that was my only choice, but some people will send people back to the, to the um, uh, website in general. You could actually set it up 
basically, if they abandoned cart and they got to look at this item, you could send them back to that item that they were looking at. You would do that by defining when you set up your remarketing audience, you would have, they must have been to cart, they must not have purchased, and they must have went to this page. And then with that, they click on your offer to get $10 off, you could send them back to that individual product they were looking at. And that might actually be the better way to go. We actually had it where that actually beats sending them back to the cart itself, because you could literally send the people who click on your ad directly back to the cart itself. And with most sites, the cart's gonna be pre-populated with the item that was in their cart when they left because of cookies on the user's browser. If you're using Shopify and so forth, that's gonna happen by default. But again, sometimes it will actually be even better to send them back to the product page itself in that the pro of the product that they were looking at and that can actually work better. Uh, this works better if you have less products on your site because if they're browsing multiple products on your site, uh, you won't necessarily, as with as much certainty, know exactly what a uh, product page to send them back to. So therefore, you just send them back to the cart, and the cart automatically has the items that they were looking at in the cart, or you know what was considering them purchasing. But you could actually send them back to the product page, run that test, and see if that works better for you, and create a separate cart abandonment audience for each item that you're selling so that you can send them back to the product page in question. Because ultimately, what it, if you sometimes it would work better to send them back to the product page because if they abandon cart, if it's a big decision that they're making to buy your product, like it's you sell something for several hundred dollars, if not thousands of dollars, more so on the thousands of dollars side, sending them back to the cart isn't gonna be as good as sending them back to the product page because if you send them back to the product page, they can resell themselves on all the reasons why they want to buy, then go on to the cart. So in other words, the more expense, as we found it as well, the more expensive the product it is, the more likely sending them back to the product page is going to work better. But with all that said, going back to the uh, dynamic ad and what I was getting to here, what we'll do is we'll send them back to the cart if it's a lower price item. If it's a more expensive item, we'll try to send them back to the product page in which was the product that we're likely looking at if we offer a smaller amount of items on the site. But either way, we'll say, you know, again, going back to what I was saying before, forget your order, use code CART10 to receive 10% off now. And the, uh, you're gonna do better if you say now. The idea is you want them to think that this code is only gonna work if you click on this ad right now. Because again, like I was saying before, which is why I gave you this background, about user psychology here. Do uh, you want people to not think that procrastination is good? You want them to not procrastinate because if they procrastinate, that's where your cart abandonment comes from for the people that intended to, at least for the percentage who intended to come back in order to get that you know, amount of people to that are that you're gonna lose because they left and intended to come back and then never did, how you're gonna get more sales is by getting people that, so, so in other words, you'll get more sales by having less procrastinators, you want them to think that this discount code is only going to last for a little bit. Um, you could say only lasts until for the next 24 hours. This code, this cart 10 code will only last for the next 24 hours. That is one way that you could build up even more uh, urgency in order to get this ad to work better. We have experimented with that. That in itself is a little hard to do because once you start adding more and more stuff to your ad, the important parts of the ad get you have to use smaller font and it gets to be to where even though having more information don't if the user were to have that extra information it would be helpful they ultimately don't absorb it all because the text is too small and they don't read the whole thing at the rate that you wanted to read at versus seeing a few words in bold big bold font though at a higher percentage digest that information so I would normally just say, don't worry about, you know, say this code only lasts for 24 hours, next 24 hours, just say 10% off now because it cuts down on the amount of text that you have. But forget your order, use code CART10 to receive 10% off your order now or just now. And the key thing here also is 
cart 10, your discount code that you're going to have just for cart abandoners to get an incentive not to procrastinate like I was talking about before, you want it to say something about cart so they know it's exclusive to the cart and they know it's not something or likely is to be something that they're going to be able to use way later on. Again, going back to the procrastination thing. So use code cart 10 to receive 10% off your order now. They'll know that this is probably if I don't click on this ad, even though it doesn't explicitly say it, if I don't click on this ad and use this code right now for an order that I would, you know, I'm planning to go back to buy anyway, that I'm probably not going to get my $10 or 10% off. Therefore, I got to, I better use it now. I better not procrastinate. Therefore, of the people that get to your cart, you have less of them abandoning overall without making a purchase now or later. And, but with that language, you add in there the image of the product that we're looking at. This is done through dynamic remarketing is what it's called. I'm sure everybody's seen here that dynamic remarketing ads on the Google Display Network or just on, the, you know, any, on, on different websites where you see banner ads. You see a lot of times if you were on an e-commerce site, you see a banner ad that has the products itself that you were looking at. Everybody's kind of seen these. Uh, those ads are sort of okay, but that whole uh, way that that works is you give Google basically, basically through Google Merchant Center all the list of products on your site, and then you can run a dynamic remarketing campaign so that the products that you were, that the consumer was looking at on your site can automatically propagate, and they'll build you a custom ad for every single person who's been on your site so that they see the items that they were looking at. That same functionality of what, that, what makes that work is what's going to be able to put the item that they were last looking at on your site in your ad. So you have one little designated spot on your banner ad there that's going to have what they were looking at and then the rest of your ad is going to be dedicated to the copy. Forget your order, use code 10, CART10 10 to receive 10% off your order now. And be able to give you uh, the results that you wouldn't get just by showing them the item because there's no call to action there. And, the, and it's gonna still beat the results of just having the offer there because they ain't gonna remember exactly what they were looking at unless you show them the item a lot of times. So that's why you use both the combination. That's why you're gonna get the best results with both of those elements of the copy with the offer on it and the item showing in combination. Uh, technically, you can actually use, um, you could have a, a, a spot for two items on your ad. If you think that if you're in a niche where people use a shopping cart, like they use a shopping cart in a grocery store where they actually usually buy more than one thing, in that case, you could have more than one ad, uh, product spot there. So you could show them multiple things that they were recently looking at and experiment with that. But you, going back to what I said before, you're going to get into a situation where if you put too much ad or allow too much real estate for the product images, then you're going to have less real estate for the text. The text is going to get smaller because the text gets, once the text gets to so small, it's not going to be read anymore or paid attention to, therefore defeating the purpose of the ad to begin with. So your goal is always to make the text, when they see the ad, very, very, very readable and still have a little bit of room for the product itself and, and so it's balanced. With that said, the ROI on a ca uh, campaign and an ad like this is probably going to be for you around the 5 to 10x range. So for every $5 you spend advertising this ad, you should get a dollar back. Up to around $10 back for every $1 you spend advertising this ad, which obviously is a good reason to do this. It's a little tricky to put together, but once it's there, it works and works and works for the next five, 10 years straight. So that's, everybody wants one you know, ad that is gonna be able to make the millions of dollars in, with PPC and PPC advertising. The big money actually comes in, mo for most people, is finding small hacks like this and then working on another hack and another hack and another hack and then adding them all up because that's what your competitors aren't willing to do or don't know to do. If it was one ad that worked, your competitors would already be doing it. So anyway, with the combination though of the, the offer, with the text offer and then the image of the product there, 
that we found actually works almost double in terms of how many sales per dollar spent you're gonna get versus just the offer by itself. And the if you just have the product showing by itself, it, you know, the product showing the product showing by itself without the offer next to it, it's gonna do like four times, five times as good. So for all practical purposes, you want if you had to pick one or the other, you pick the offer. But the best of the best is going to be the offer and the product image in combination with balance there. So, so you could do that with Google Display Network very easily and through Google Ads. Uh, you can also do this on Facebook as well because they have dynamic product feeds as well. Uh, and you could do the same kind of thing there with a cart, a cart abandonment specific audience set up through your audience manager just the same way you could do it through Google. That way if a person's on Facebook a lot that abandons your cart, they're gonna be able to always see your ad versus on Google Display Network, that covers pretty much anywhere you see banner ads running on the web, you'll be able to get in front of them with Google Display Network. So different users have different online habits. So you wanna make sure people that are spending time on Facebook see your ad because it's so, so profitable, you want them to always you want to make sure you, they, they will see your ad there. And if they go to other websites other than Facebook, you want to make sure that they'll still see your ad. So you can do the same thing on both uh, places. Uh, with that said, the, uh, <clears throat> on Google, uh, excuse me, Google Display Network, well, how you actually set this up, if you're wondering how this magic happens, it's through using a custom dynamic ad template. So dynamic advertising is very easy to set up. Once you have your product feed uploaded to Google, then Google automatically generates you a ad and it's pretty much done already. If you wanna do something fancy like I'm talking about here where you want the products that are gonna be put into the ad displayed a certain way and doing uh, to where you can have text next to the products, you got to do a custom dynamic ad and that's done through using one of the dynamic ad templates that Google has for certain industries or the pre-designated custom dynamic ad template that Google has for this type of thing. So it's going to take some time to put that together in terms of the ad template itself. But once it's done, the product feeds in the same way as any other dynamic uh, remarketing campaign would okay so anyway that's you know physically how to do that is a similar thing going on in Facebook as to as to what you're going to be doing on Google as well um, so <clears throat> realistically on Facebook even if you just had your product there show up for the person on the uh, the image part of the ad and then the headline said did you forget your order that combination would work pretty much just as good as having the image itself doing something crazy. So that's what I do there on Facebook. I want the image of the product or products that they're looking at on the, on the ad and then the headline descriptions dedicated to the copy. Forget your, forget your order, use code CART10 to receive 10% off now, okay? So anyway, that's the whole shebang here that I was gonna go through in general, how you can actually get a lot of extra, basically free sales from the people that are abandoning your cart to cut down the amount of people abandoning and get five, 10 X ROI on your campaign by running this small little offer on the people who hit your cart and don't buy. Uh, if you liked this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel as we have a lot of other videos on this channel which have other excellent advice on how to make money with PPC through Google, Facebook, and so forth. I run a PPC firm here and the stuff that we're testing and we find works, we bring it to you here for you to be able to use and give you all the information about it, just like I did here. So and then along with that, stuff that doesn't work, the stuff that you need to stay away from that'll lose you money, we also give it to you here on the same channel. So you're getting actual actionable advice from somebody that's in the trenches doing this stuff on a regular basis. If you want to know how to put campaigns together and in a way that basically will guarantee your results, you can find my blog at our agency website at guaranteeppc.com slash blog where I have step-by-step -step advice on how to set up 
ads like these down to, you know, those, to the you know, specific steps to set those up and the campaigns we got to use to guarantee our clients' results itself because that's what we do at our agency. You can find great extra information there on how to do PPC uh, that goes into detail on things versus the high level advice we give it to you or the high level advice we give to you on this channel. Uh, beyond that, if you have any questions about anything that I covered today, things that you think that I should have covered or did, you know, and did not or things that you wanted to ask, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. Uh, beyond that, I have a program that we just started at our PPC firm where we're offering uh, turnkey PPC campaigns where basically if you wanted to start a brand new company, do a service company or e-commerce company in a certain niche, you could look at our pre-developed PPC campaigns that we've developed for certain markets and the results we've gotten in those markets, developing those campaigns over many years for clients that we either, you know, basically, uh, you know, the company basically in most cases are, are working in one market, you're in another market, you can use this, that same campaign in your market, given you're not gonna be competing in the same markets, uh, geographic markets, and get the same results as them. So, and you can see the results that those campaigns get ahead of time. So you have a, basically a turnkey business in a box given the hardest thing to do in business most of the time in competitive markets is getting a PPC campaign that's gonna work going. So you literally could take our campaigns that are already working, put the business together, outsource all the work to somebody else in the industry, take 10% off the top for yourself and have a business already. Uh, we've got quite a few people doing this already, which is why I bring it up on this channel. Uh, we have campaigns in e-commerce and services uh, itself where you can actually see the results we're getting and then know what you would be able to get using the exact same campaign templates and landing pages that we're using for that industry already or have used in that industry already. Maybe we've got something in your market already where you don't have to go through all the hassle of setting up PPC for yourself, learning all this stuff that I share with you on this channel. You can just use what we've already used for that market and is gonna get you great results without having to do all the stuff. So anyway, if you're interested in that, reach out to my firm. We'll let you know what markets we have PPC campaigns for and the results we've got in those markets and so forth. And you can decide for yourself if you wanna do it or not. So I'll wrap it up with that. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great PPC strategy for you to go through and potentially use there as well. See ya later.